So um, I want to talk to you about hope today. I guess nobody needs hope but me. I said, I want to talk to you about hope today and uh, hope through faith. And I don't know about you, but I feel like this whole service has been leading to this message. I, I listened to Miss Jackie's message. I listened to Brother Larry's message, even the worship music. And I feel like the Lord is telling this service that we need some hope today. And, uh, and I don't know who needs it more than the other or if it's just for me. But I praise God that I need, uh, I need a little hope. So um, I'm going to pull up this first. I hope my clicker works here. All right. So just so you know, I'm going to confess to you, I was researching in the New King James Version, but this Bible I'm going to read out of is the NIV, so forgive me. All right. So just pay attention to, to me, if you will, if, uh, if it's going to confuse you. If not, you can pay attention to this. But the scripture is found in Romans chapter 8. Uh-oh, I'm going too far. Don't outclick me now up there. Romans chapter 8. Can you even read that? It's small writing. Sorry. I'm long-winded. All right. So we're starting at verse 18. Eight. Verses 18 through 25. It reads, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope. That the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption into sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. May God bless the readers and the hearers of his mighty word. Now, I want to speak to you about hope through faith, because um, this whole year, my wife and I have been hoping for something. And I told, uh, I shared it in a prayer visual, and I'm going to share it as a body. I know my wife wouldn't mind, but we've been praying for a son. And so for those that don't know, I have four daughters. And so it's easier to know why I want a son in my life. Just one male dog isn't doing it. You know, he's not a companion to me. He doesn't speak, and he definitely don't listen. So I believe that hope is a product of faith, and, my, and I have faith because of my hope and the guarantee I have in Christ. And so I hope for the manifestation of the Spirit because of my faith. So over many, many years of my life, no, I thought that would go over better. Many, many years of my life, I've noticed these two things, that people are a habit of these two things, or they're creatures of these two things. They're creatures of value, and they're creatures of practice. In other words, what do you put your practice and do? What do you, what do you habitually do? What's your habits? And because of this, people usually show what manifests in their habits. So I'm going to, give you, I'm going to tell you an illustration. So this man, he was getting married. Him and his wife decided to elope, and so they checked themselves into a hotel. They decided that they weren't going to tell their parents. Well, the young man picked up his tux. He didn't know how to tie a tie. And so he was looking for someone to tie a tie, and he comes to a a gentleman in the hallway, and this gentleman said, yes, of course, I'll tie the tie for you. Go back to your room. I'll meet you there. So a few minutes later, a few moments later, the man comes, and he ties the tie, or he comes into the room, And he tells the man, lay on the bed with your arms down and your legs together. And the man is looking strange, like, why in the world would you want me to do that? And so he says, trust me. And so the man trusts him. He doesn't have any choice. He has to get the tie tied. And so he lays down. He closes his eyes. And the man ties a perfect tie. 
And when he gets up, he's like, man, why, how in the world did you, why did, why did I need to lay down? Well, the man was a mortician. <laughs> See, he had to do what he... Laugh harder than that one. That's the old joke. <laughs> See, the man did what he knew how to do. Do you get the illustration? So if we put into practice certain things, those things will come and manifest in our actions. We'll put them into practice. And I'm going to give and I'm going to bring this illustration home later. Um, does anyone recognize this gentleman? Anyone? Any history buffs in here? Okay. His name is Hiro Onada. He was a second lieutenant in the Imperial Army assigned to the intelligence agency. And during, this was during second, the Second World War. Okay. Now, Hiro was um, sent to the jungle in the Philippines. Uh, the specific jungle was called the Lubang Islands. Now, he was assigned to an intelligence agency in order to combat the United States and the Filipino armies. Now, he was dropped off there with three other people. Now, with these three other people, he was told to, to um, conduct guerrilla attacks on this army until his commander told him to stop. Until his commander told him to stop, he said, you, you conduct these attacks until I tell you to stop. Well, when he got there, don't you know, the war got over in September of 1944. So from uh, December of 1944 to September of 1945, him and his uh, other army per people conducted these attacks, okay? Well, the war was over. They told him to leave. Do you think Anato Lee left? No, he was an intelligence, intelligence officer. He thought that there was some propaganda. He was like, no, the, the, the attacks are not going to cease until what? Until my commander tells me. So what did they do? They sent letters. They sent newspapers. They even sent love letters from his loved ones. But he would not believe them. He said, no, it can't be true. My commander did not tell me so. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? The war is not over, he said. And he didn't leave for not 10, not 20, but almost 30 years. He stayed in that jungle. And it wasn't till they found his commander, a bookseller. 30 years later, this man probably could barely walk. 30 years, they had to go get his commander to bring him and tell this man to leave. Now, what is the relevance of this? Who is your commander? Who brings hope to you? It's God. I hear God. I hear Jesus. I want you to consider this. Now, I'm going to give you some details about Hero, what he brought out of that jungle. Hero brought out of this jungle a working uniform. The man's uniform was not tattered. He did not look like Tarzan. He came out with a working rifle and several rounds, hundreds of rounds, grenades, still working, and his sword was polished. I want you to think about this in relevance today, how us as Christians, how we as Christians, what do we put in practice? Do you practice keeping your uniform ready? Do you practice keeping your rounds loaded, your ammo at re at readily available to you? Do you keep your sword polished? Now, I want you to understand this. They can't barely see that slide, so I might have to. Can you pull that down, brother? Because I was going to reference to that slide. Okay, that's all right. So this is the, okay trying for me. The point of this is, I'm just going to give you the scripture. The scripture is um, the, okay, hope is denying yourself and fully depending on Jesus. 
The scripture was the rich young ruler. I want you to think about the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he says, and I'm paraphrasing, that I've done all these things. Jesus gives him a, a list of laws that he, needs to, that he needs to follow. He says, I've done all of these. What do I need to do next? He says to sell it all. Sell it all and follow me. Now, we all know the story. The rich young ruler was not willing to sell his things. Why? Think about it. It's because he valued his materialistic things. This is what he valued. He didn't want to let these things go. It's because he was holding on to them because this is where his identity was. This is what he put his hope in. Think about some people today. I've, I've talked to people. People call me, I lost my job, and they lose hope. People say, oh, man, I ain't going to be able to afford my boat no more. They lose their hope. People say, man, I got to get rid of a couple of my cars. A couple? People don't got one car, and you got to get rid of two other ones, and you mad. I don't understand that. But this is the reality of the world that we live in today. People put value and hope in material things, things that will eventually dissolve. Even wise man Solomon said, the richest man at that time, it's all going to go away. So why put your hope in something that's going to just dissolve anyway, instead of putting your hope and your faith in Christ? Amen. Now, this is a tough one, and I'm going to try to explain this as best I can, so don't, don't, don't throw anything at me, Okay. This is Jesus speaking. So, again, I'm just delivering the mail, okay? Luke 14, 26, Jesus says that you have to hate your own life if you want to be his disciple. That's a hard pill for some people to swallow. Hate your own life. And it took me till I was 34 years old to understand that. I said, at the end of my own driveway, Boo-hoo and asking God, why can't I stop doing this? It's because he said, because you love it and you choose to do it. You love it and you choose to do it, Joshua. And I boo-hooed at the end of my driveway, asking the Lord, where is my hope going to come from? And he, and he quickly showed me, it was from me, when Pastor gave me some very loving and harsh words in his office. I remember like it was yesterday. But what was Jesus saying? <laughs> he said, praise God. What, what was Jesus illustrating? He was illustrating that we have to pick up our cross and follow him. Now, in that days, in those days, the Greeks would do that. The, I'm sorry, the Romans would do that to show submission. They would have someone carry their cross during crucifixion to show submission. So what was Jesus illustrating to us? If you want to follow him, you have to truly submit to him. You hear what I'm saying? This is not something that we do on Sunday. If I see, if someone is at the grocery store and I ask them, hey, man, yeah, and they mention that they know such a, such a person, it's usually Crystal. I'm like, oh, man, I didn't know that about Crystal. I'm just choking. <laughs> but a person should know you on Sunday the same way on Wednesday. If our hope is in Jesus Christ, are you, are you picking up what I'm putting down here? I know I say this so, so often, and it's because, and my fire, trust me, it only comes from the Lord. Because, and, and I don't say this lightly, I was a wretched man. A wretched man. When Paul say that scripture, man, I feel like he's shooting me right in the heart. Like, yeah, that was me. And the reason why I love the Lord so much, because he could love a wretched man like me. To love a wretched man like me, to deliver me from that. Man, who else can do that? I ain't met a psychiatrist that can do it. Sorry, doctors. I ain't met a lawyer that can deliver me like Jesus. Sorry, lawyers. I ain't even met a pastor that can do it. And I love Pastor Stafford. Only Jesus. Are you, are you getting it? So if your hope, if you need hope today, listen to me, it's found in Christ. Now, I've been told that brothers, and I mean brothers, I mean African-American men, don't speak up about this. And I'm going to tell you something. I find hope in my people. I'm not ashamed to be an African-American person. But I am ashamed that some of us would agree that abortion is right. I'm ashamed by that. In any way, shape, or form. 
I'm ashamed that someone would say taking a life in any way is right, especially the innocent life of a child. And I say that with confidence. I've walked down these streets with pastor. We've prayed. And to be honest with you, I never considered it until I got old enough and someone taught me. So this is why I'm teaching it to you. It's wrong. Do you hear what I'm saying? We find hope in life, not death. We find faith through life and not death. And we serve a God that is alive and not dead. Do you, are, you, are you seeing this? I thought I wouldn't get as many amens, but thank you, Lord. So this is what I want to tell you. Wrong is wrong. When we find hope, it's through something right. Now, I could give you a list of wrongs, and some of you, you don't want to even tell people what they're doing wrong because you're afraid of getting unfollowed on Facebook. You're afraid of losing an Instagram follower. Oh, man, I might, get, I might be unfamiliar with my TikTok. Who cares? You can unfollow me now. It's all right. God still loves me. And that's where my hope is. Now, hold on to your Bibles, my people. This is your rifle. And sorry, your cell phones ain't going to do it. Because your cell phones bring up too many other things. It, it just does. Your cell phones brings up too much other stuff. I mean, you, ain't, you can't focus on your cell phone for five minutes before, ding, you need to breathe. Ding, such and such, like your picture. Ding, uh, come on now. Get to your Bibles. That is your rifle. Get you a Bible, especially my young people. You don't want to hear me say it. I put it in their lap every Sunday. Not every Sunday, I try. To hate and despise sin is hope. I want you to understand this. For no one that has, ne- has never taught this, I know pastor teaches this, but some people like to listen to other people. I want you to understand, to despise sin is hope. Because it says that your hope is in Christ. Because he came to die for sins, despite popular belief. Yes, he loves you. He absolutely loves you. But he came and he loved you because you were a sinner. Hallelujah. Another example in hope is found in Christ simply is this. It's illustrated through this obvious point. To put your faith in the fallible, which means man, materialistic things, is to fail. But Jesus never sinned. So to look at Jesus, he never sinned. He healed. He blessed. That is the infallible. It's something that cannot fail. So to hope in Jesus is to have true hope and faith. Are you hearing me? Now, hope in the Greek is pronounced elpis or elpis. I try my best to do this. Can you click that slide for me, brother? I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, I've been diagnosed with elpis. In Jesus, in Jesus, in Jesus. Say, I've been, all right, say, I've been diagnosed with elpis in Jesus. Y'all got to finish the sentence now. It may sound like something else. (laughs) All right? And so it means to have an expectation of trust. It means expectation, I'm sorry, trust and confidence. It comes from the root word elpo or elpo, which means to anticipate with pleasure. Now, that's a key point. How many people read that in red? I put it in red because I didn't want you to miss it. But it says to anticipate with pleasure. How many of you are tired of being a Christian? I bet not see one hand. <laughs> How many of you feel like some days you're just like, man, this is hard? Some people say they feel that way. But, but guess what? He said every Monday. <laughs> but, but guess what? That's why I put up Lieutenant Onada. He reminds us, 29 years. I don't know who's ever deployed in here. Any military people in here? Six months seems like 20 years. Now, the Marines do one year. I know they're miserable. But six months in the Air Force, and I felt miserable. And our lifestyle is a lot better than other branches. But I felt like my life was over after six months. 29 years? This gave me a new perspective on life. 
When I read the story about Lieutenant Donata, it did. And I didn't look at it as a worldly thing, you know, because, of course, he was doing things that, you know, we wouldn't agree with. But the fact that he could listen to his commander. Now, do you realize in Japan, the emperor was, at that time was like God. And so when this commander told him something, it was in reference to the God they served. Did y'all get that illustration? And so when he told Lunata, L- Lieutenant Onada to stay in that jungle, he's like, man, he getting that directly from God. So when Pastor Stafford stands up here on this stage, when he gives us direction, trust his heart that he's giving it to us from the Spirit of God. When the pastor tells you something from the Holy Spirit, he's bringing it to you from God. So stand on that foundation. Stand on there. Keep your gun polished. I don't think y'all hearing me because this might be tough. Some of the things pastors say ain't feeling with you right, right? Some of them things is convicting. So, Josh, you need to, don't do me like that. Yes, that's true. Conviction is good. I'm praising God, man. I feel good. I don't know about y'all, but I feel great. Now, I guess it's safe to say the opposite of hope is fear. I am guess it's safe to say the opposite of hope is fear. Now, Paul wrote to uh, Timothy in 2 Timothy 1. He said, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of a sound mind. A sound mind. Paul's reminding Timothy about genuine faith. Now, in this scripture, it says it was tears shed. There was tears shed. So that means something wasn't easy. There were some times where things weren't easy, but yet hope was on the tongue of Paul. Faith was on the heart of Paul. Right now, we're not going through a time where it feels like everything's good. We're not going through a uh, pastor was just praying this morning, and, you know, I usually get my news from him and Crystal because I don't watch it. But he was t- talking about an uh, a airplane, air flight, or something that happened at the airline. Thousands of cancellations. This ruins people's business plans, their plans with their families. Maybe they were going home. You know, something just as small as that. A virus sweeping through the country. Seems like, again, starting all over. Racism. Still there. Are we the beacon of hope, church? Are we the beacon of hope? I'm honestly asking you that question. Do you regurgitate the junk you hear? Or do you... Pick up your sword and slice that junk to pieces and say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke it. I know most of the people in this church, I know there's no racism in here, but it doesn't mean anything if you shut up. It means nothing if we stay quiet. I know people love each other in here, but it means nothing if you don't show it. Where is the hope going to come from? Jesus gave us the legs to walk. He gave you the arms to stretch out. He gave you the voice to speak. Some of us taking it for granted. I didn't mean to convict you today. I just came to preach. This is what the Holy Spirit gave me. Sorry. I love you. These are words of love. Trust me. Just for those who seek genuine faith, where are you? There's a genuine faith and a hope in Christ. I pray that all of you will find it. At the end of your road, like I did. I just wanted to throw that in there just in case you didn't get that. At the end of your road. There's an end of the road for someone that's different from others. Everyone has a different road they travel. But the end result, if you hope for it, is the same. The end result for the hope is Christ. Now, Noah was diagnosed with Elpis. He had an expectation and a trust and confidence to build an ark. For those that don't know, it hadn't rained in years. But he had the confidence, the elpis, to build an ark because he trusted the Lord. Now, Ashley, I've been praying for you all week. And I just felt the Holy Spirit tell me to tell you this. I 
I didn't even share this with my wife. But I prayed to God, and I said, Lord, if her hope is there, if she has unbelief, help her in her belief. But I believe that this message is for you. There's some others in here that this is for, but I couldn't help. For those that don't know me, I'm a crier. <laughs> These muscles are just for show. <laughs> but I don't often tell you enough, Ashley, that I pray for you dearly. And not that I'm trying to bring attention to Ashley, but from the Holy Spirit and from the bottom of my heart, yes. this is the outwardly hope. But there's someone in here that you need inwardly hope. And God might have said it on my heart to pray for Ashley. But there's someone in here, and I know who someone has shared with me in the past, that your hope has been lost. You don't believe that crisis even existed. I can tell you that's a lie from the pit of hell. I can tell you that from the pit of hell, the devil would want nothing more than to tell you that Jesus never existed. I listen sometimes to these atheists um, do these, these debates with Christians, strong Christian men. They call them apologetics. And it's just amazing that no one can see the obvious. The obvious is, is that people that are, don't believe in Christ, don't believe in God, just want to live their life the way they want to live it. This is the obvious. They don't want anyone to hold them accountable. They just want to live their life. Now, I understand. I do because I was the same way. But I know that hope is found in Christ. Ashley, hope is on the way. Yes. Hallelujah. Now, yes, give God praise. Now I got to figure out where I was at. Job was diagnosed with, with Elpis. Job was diagnosed with Elpis when he lost everything. He lost everything except for his wife. Even his health, he still had Elpis. He still had hope in God. He still knew where hope would come from. And in John 16, 7, it says, for, you, for it is for your good that I am going away. And unless I go away, the advocate will not come. The advocate will not come. Jesus knew that he was the hope that we needed. He knew what the problem is, and the question is, do you know it? Do you know where the hope is coming from? Because I can guarantee you that Jesus is still petitioning for you. There's someone still praying for you. If you're in this church, and it's been a while, if you're in this church and you're still seeking hope, someone's been praying for you. You should, you should, be, you should be honored. I'm honored for you. Now, I thank Jesus that he saw fit to bring hope to a sinner like me. But I pray that he will reveal the hope that he put in me and you, someone in, this, in this, uh, this church today. I pray that you will see the hope that he has, has for you. And it's not just a hope for you to just be saved. It's a hope for a good life. It's a hope for a husband, a wife, to, to have financial freedom. It's the hope to walk, to run, to hug, to scream. I'm not a screamer, so I hope it for somebody else. Can you change that slide for me, brother? Now, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if you lacked hope, there is something that you can hope for now and put your faith in it. By confidence and by trust. You can step out on the water like Peter without losing and keeping your eye off of Christ. Now, this is the final point. Before hero... Inada, Lieutenant Inada, left in 1974, 29 years later. It was, a, it was a young discoverer that was looking for him. And he was the one that told Inada to come home. And Inada was going to shoot him. He thought that he was the enemy. But he noticed that the man was wearing black sandals and black socks. Now, I don't know about Japanese culture, but for some reason, he, he saw fit that 
someone wearing black socks and black sandals was a Japanese person. I don't know. All right, so I'm just, I'm just repeating what I read, okay? Forgive me if it's wrong. And uh, he tells him to leave, and Onada said, I will not leave again until my commander tells me. So they go home. The, the discoverer go, goes home, tells the government, and eventually he comes out and he has to give the sword to the Filipino president because of all the things he's done. He's had to surrender. He had to surrender. He had to surrender. Now, if Jesus is your commander, or if he isn't, it's time to surrender. Fully surrender. It's not time to come out of your jungle. It's still a battle zone. But it's time to surrender fully to your commander. If you trust him, expect from him. If you love him, put your hope in him. If you put these into practice, it's not time to leave your post. Now, I have some scriptures I want to read to you real quick in hope. 1 Peter 1.13 says, Therefore, the, with minds that are alert and fully sober, set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus Christ is revealed at his coming. 1 Peter 5 and 10, And the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 3. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor, labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1 and 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. I'm going to repeat that part one more time. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. Amen, O oh Lord. These are some verses of scripture that I felt the Lord would have us put into practice. Your armor, Ephesians 6, chapter 10 through 17. I'm not going to read them. You can take a picture and read them later. Or get the notes. Your ammunition, John 14, 12 through 14. And standing firm on 1 Timothy 6, 11 through 14. I'll leave you with these final thoughts. We trust God. Psalms 37, 3 through 6 reads this. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. And this is his pasture. I just want you to know. It's not Facebook, Pastor. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like noonday sun. We put our confidence in God, and we keep his, his, him on our forefront. And this is Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him. They will be like trees planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. It does not fear when the heat comes. It leaves are, its leaves are always green, and it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. We put our feet on our hope because this is what Jesus has guaranteed us. Our hope is in Christ because hope in Christ is a guarantee. Now, what does a guarantee mean? It will come to pass. Hallelujah. So we practice our faith, keeping our uniform ready and our ammunition plentiful, and we stand firm in the Lord.